Hey y'all, and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. And we are back with the most unusual mystery box of all time. And the reason why is this box has no action figures in it. Now wait, don't turn the channel. I promise you are going to absolutely love this. I was cleaning out after Christmas and putting away the Christmas decorations, and I realized I had this entire huge box filled with all of those add-ons and pack-ins and displays that came with all of those great Toy Biz action figures from the early 2000s. So let's take a look at some of the incredible, incredibly well-detailed action figure pack-ins and accessories that came from different toys from the early 2000s. And you, what you can see are things, things like this. So here is a little display case. It's got places for where you can place the figure's feet up against the wall. There used to be a J. Jonah Jameson figure that uh, was attached to this window, but here's like the window of the Daily Bugle and a ledge above it. But look at how great all the paint detail and the sculpting is on this. This one doesn't seem to have a date on it, but I bet you some of them will. But this is the kind of thing that we're talking about. Not only do you have those display backgrounds, but we also have utterly fantastic things like this. So I remember what this is. I am not going to remember what a lot of these things are and or what they go to. And hey, if you know, please go ahead and tell me in the comments. But I do remember what this is. This is the launch gantry that came with the Marvel Select Diamond Select 7-inch Ultimate Iron Man figure. You could actually take these wires and plug them into the figure. I mean, look at how huge this is. It's so big that it's, it's too big for me to put into my Iron Man armory or fit into my display. I know that this figure was actually re-released later on. I'm not sure if it came with this giant launch system when the re-release came out, but this is from the early 2000s, 2002, 2003, right around the time when the first Ultimates book by uh, Brian Hitch and Mark Miller was in, in uh, comic book shops. So it's, it's this kind of just insanely cool stuff. This is, I believe, from an X-Files toy. Todd McFarlane did figures of the X-Files movie, and so here's like a little gurney. One of the things that I'm hoping to improve on this year are, is my toy photography. We're going to try to up our toy photography game. And some of these backdrops, this one I'm pretty sure came from the Spawn movie. Uh, McFarlane had a line of close to four inch figures that came with Spawn. And this is one of the backdrops and sets that came uh, with that. Oh my gosh, look at this. So this is just from a Toy Biz figure. I mean, this is like a giant, I believe this is like a huge Sentinel part. But look at the detail of the sculpting, the, the riveted, you know, stuff, all the wires poking out every angle that you look at this has different things. And this was just packed in with a six inch action figure and a comic book at a price lower than what we have now. So this one says 2004 from Toy Biz. And it, you know, this is, this is just, these are beautiful things. I do know what this is. This is one of my absolute favorites. So here is the desk of J. Jonah Jameson. You've got a couple of pencils. You have some of his work, some letters, you have a telephone, and you have this desk, right? Wrong. This thing actually transforms into a spider slayer. I mean, how crazy cool is that? And it fits the character because J. Jonah Jameson in the comics famously first in issue 25 was known for creating spider slayers. And so here you can actually turn JJ's desk into a spider slayer. Oh, it's amazing. Look at this base. Now it's not the iron giant, but look at that guy. He has that fifties sci-fi robot look to him. There's the weathering on even, even like the denting on his metallic shell. You can see his hands and broken arms coming out. All of this rubble. Uh, and that one says Marvel. I don't think I can see a year on it. But, you know, again, these are just display bases. That can't, look at how, how there's, look at all of the paint apps 
that go into his broken off arm and and the the burned scorch marks some would say carbon scoring on the side of this model oh it's so great these i threw these in a bag because they were much smaller but there's like lamp posts and different boxes i got a couple of pumpkin bombs in there a couple of trash cans oh here's a nice one so this one obviously came with a spider-man figure i think actually oh that's correct this one has a battery and unfortunately it's probably been on for 20 years let's see it says 2002 so yes 20 years it's probably been sitting on but you could actually plug spider-man into the back of that and spider-man would light up but here you've got a couple of like 80s you know, New York City punks all webbed up with the courtesy of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man sign. He's got them webbed up to a police lantern. Ugh. You know, even simpler bases like this Fantastic Four base uh, or this X-Men base, you know, you can use that in all kinds of displays. Here's another X-Men base. Obviously, this one is for Storm. I believe she would fit on there. Actually, this one has batteries as well, and it says... 2000. So this one's actually 22 years old. As a matter of fact, I'm not certain somebody probably knows this may have come with the movie Storm from the original X-Men movie. And I think when you moved her up and down, it would make like a, a thunder and lightning sort of sound. Now I do know, I do know this one. So this is again from Todd McFarlane's X-Files, the movie line. And it's this like gummy chamber, which includes, oh, this just horror show of a figure that actually you can see all of his intestines and his veins and his muscles you know this was just the pack-in this was not the figure that you bought this was the thing that came with the figure and it was given this much oh look at that he's actually got kidneys back there so you can see his crooked spine and his scapula and there's two kidneys back in the back Oh, that's just disgustingly fantastic. Here's a little bit of a, of a smaller base. Not exactly sure what that one goes to. Here is one that this actually... I wonder actually if this is the base that went along with the first Marvel Legends Toad figure because it has kind of this swamp look that they've got in three dimensions. It's almost got like an epoxy over the top of it. You have this tree stump. You have a, a frog leaping another another fully painted tree stump i mean there are paint details inside the stump you know even the flowers and the rocks on the side you know i mean this thing you could display it this way there are rocks painted on the side of this oh this is one of my favorites so here is a new york city rooftop with a skylight and little smokestacks for uh, for venting. This, I, I really think I'm going to try and work this into some displays as you know part of a rooftop scene. Ah, uh, now this one may have come with Captain America. It may have come with the Red Skull. You've got that German uh, uh, pistol there. You have kind of the the Nazi eagle that's been broken and, and down. Oh, look at that! Actually, yeah, abs look at this. Here's like a German World War II helmet that's taken a bullet shot to it oh and it, and it must have fit with a, a backdrop because that's where that's where this side comes from that one says 2002 so that would have been very early in the marvel legends line i these might have been with diamond select these kind of smaller bases that had a stand but even just the the robotic features are pretty cool with those uh this was probably an Iceman. i think it has that that ice man look but, but here, it, it's a sentinel hand. It's a, a fractured and destroyed sentinel hand with like the articulation of the hand of the finger where it popped off and it's leaking out, you know, oil and fluid. I mean, each of the fingers has faded paint on it. The thumb is popping out where it's broken and has the wiring coming down. Yeah, I mean, this is this is why I feel like we need to make sure that we, from now on, Put the sculptors' names on the packaging. The sculptors and the design team deserve to be recognized because here is a base that it probably came with a Thor figure because you have this, you know, frost giant dead Viking skull. He's gotten his tooth knocked out, likely by Molnir. You have a, a fractured half skeleton. Oh no, that's a head. Look at that. 
There's another skull, you know, with with a crown on the top. Here is yet another, you know, two-thirds skeleton with the arm that still has its wrist bracelet and, and holding its sword with its helmet, its its lower mandible, the lower jaw has been chopped off as you would expect. It's it got this shield, this this very, very Nordic Icelandic Viking shield. You have a hammer. Look at the amount of detail that went into this thing that was simply packed in with a toy in 2001. They even gave you a way to display it on the wall if you wanted to to hang it up and display your figures that way. Oh, it's just, just incredible. I believe this is the backdrop for the very first Captain America figure. I think we'll see something very similar to this in the Marvel Legends uh, 2000, uh, 20th anniversary line. Okay, we've already seen that one. Street Lamp. This came with a Spidey figure because you could attach him to it and has the Telltale Spider right there on it. Has a suction cup so that you could, you know, plant it and then Spidey would swing around on the lamp. Another X-Men symbol. Another Black Widow symbol. This one, 2005, but there was a place to put, you know, a stand so that you could have her uh, up above the display or peg holes for her feet. But look at the detail in the bullet marks. And none of these are the same. Every single one of these bullet marks is different. It's got a little bit of a rubbery texture. I have to take that downstairs and use that with some of my Black Widow figures. Uh, I've seen this one, another different Iceman. This could have been a Storm base. It's got a little stand for it. Uh, another, just kind of, you know, just another great kind of New York City scene. You've got a newspaper floating there. There's like a crushed water bottle sitting on the side. You know, even if I don't use this, I might take this part and use it as part of a diorama or a display. All right, now we're getting into some good stuff. So here is the bike from the very first Toy Biz Ghost Rider figure. Oh my gosh, look at how great this is. Now, this is very stylized for the the look of the bike in the in the 90s, which is okay. I mean, that's that's when this figure was what it was really representing, but I love that that front there. And I like what they did with the wheels. They they still roll. You know, you still have rollers down here or you can mount it. You've got the way that you could you could mount it to the wall, but the fire effect really works for that bike. Oh, this is a good one. That's this is for the Silver Surfer. This is for the original Silver Surfer and you could attach his board there and you had this kind of moon rock asteroid looking thing that could be a base so that you could have your Silver Surfer floating. Here is the display that came with the original Toy Biz brown suit Wolverine. Uh, you have, you know, a, a ninja master sitting in front of a dojo. The dojo has, you know, sculpting all the way around. There was something here where I think you could put the figure in and have him, have him displaying. You've got the lanterns on either side, even the wood grain of the dojo and the paper, the paper uh, windows are back there. 2004 is the date on that one. Unbelievable. Another giant, like destroyed, mechanized piece. I'm not sure if this is meant to be a sentinel or like a almost like a giant Iron Man, but again, this is the type of detail that's on the side of this, and there's the same amount that's given to this side. You know, these were packed in with action figures that came with a full 32-page comic book, all for like 10 bucks. 2004 from Toy Biz. I think everybody who is familiar with this channel knows how much I love Toy Biz. And hey, if you're not familiar with this channel, this would be a great time to go ahead and click subscribe, click that notification bell, and give this video a like so that we can keep doing the things uh, that we do and keep teaching comic history and action figures as we go along. More Storm stuff. Obviously, you can see kind of the lightning coming out of this base. I'm saving that. That's really cool. This is awesome. I, now this one, 2000 is X-Men. So this came from that first X-Men movie and it had something something that attached here or did that. I think this is like potentially with Magneto because you can see all how all the metal has been rendered and is, is torn up. I want to say that this was uh, part, of, part of one of the Magneto figures that came with that set. Oh yeah. So Hydra. We have a Hydra 
kind of cauldron with flames. We have a, a step up, and I believe there was a throne. Maybe there was a throne, or maybe this was where the Red Skull was supposed to sit. This says 2006 Toy Biz. But look at look at that cauldron. You know, I, I potentially may have to take that off and use it like in a in a Hydra Red Skull sort of display. Just, I mean, just the the paint wash that was applied to this. Look at the look at the how the orange is shimmering off of this green metallic look so that it has it looks like it's a bronzed, a weathered bronzed cauldron with these flames coming out. Another X-Men piece. Uh, I think this one has a motion feature of some kind. Oh, there it is. Oh! I know what this is. Oh, this is so cool. So this is also from the first X-Men movie. Yes, 2000. So what you would do is you would put Wolverine on here, press it down, and you can see the adamantium in his skeleton. You can see the metal lacing his bones and his adamantium claws coming down his forearm. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? That is so sweet. You know, I've saved all of those movie figures, but these things had just been piled up in this box for so long. It is so cool to rediscover all of these things. Here's a classic wall, just a nice brick wall. Certainly can use that and some dioramas, even if we have to kind of take it off of its base. Even the base itself uh, would be really nice. Even inverted and use it as a... Uh, and I wonder, actually, that may be the way. Maybe this may be the top. And then Spider-Man kind of crawled up, up the sides. Here's another one of these. Very choice. Oh, yeah. I know this. This came from the very first Daredevil figure in the second series of Spider-Man Classics, the precursor line to Marvel Legends. Yep, 2001. So you're talking about something that is now 21 years old. This thing can go drink. If I wanted to take this thing out for a beer... It could legally drink because it's 21 years old. But I love that stained glass look, all of the detail, even up here kind of as you go around the window. Oh, and of course, it's got foot pegs so that you can place Daredevil or Spidey on it. And if you wanted, you could actually add one of the clips that would come out and have him floating or flying above it. Gorgeous. From that kind of same era, here is a, a really sweet piece of wall and a sign for the Daily Bugle with J.J., of course, dogging on Spider-Man and Spidey's kind of giving him some hair and a goatee and sp splattered on it. This one says 2001. So again, that's from that early Spidey Classics era. Let's grab these. So here, this one came with Doctor Doom. I know that because, it's, because it says Von Doom on the base. And it also could attach to a wall, which is really cool because... You could put the figure right here on top and have him standing on the on the little throne. This was E for Electra, and this came with one of the very first Marvel Select Diamond Select seven inch figures, uh, and so that is dated two thousand and two. So again, we're looking at a twenty year old piece here, giant castle set. And one of the one of the crummy things about that Electra figure was she had no articulation below the waist. And so to compensate for that, I heard this rattling around, that's why I knew it was in here. To compensate for that, they gave you different bottoms. And so you can, because she's really not articulated, you could switch out her arms or switch out her lower body. The other lower body kind of has the legs sort of in more of a V. And I didn't realize these were in here. Here is an extra pair of size and some nunchucks. But I mean, what a cool thing that they give us this already fantastic castle base, but then make it functional so you can store the extra parts to the figure. Oh my gosh. So good. Oh, here we go. Oh, something fell off. So here's a vault guardsman. Uh, looks like he's been taken out by Spider-Man because there's webs on this. Again, every angle that you look at this piece has sculpted and painted detail. It does not matter which way you look at it, it is still incredibly detailed. And you have this huge, like, downed vault guardsman. And he's actually, he's he's missing, he's, uh, he's got an arm and a leg that come out from this, because I remember that. I, hopefully they're down here in the box. I'm going to set it aside so that we can find it. Ooh, y'all know who this is. Again, wall mountable, 2001, so extremely early in the Spider-Man Classics line, 
there's the Venom symbiote just waiting to come, symbiote, just waiting to come and get you. And it's even got the eyes painted on. Oh, so good. Uh, a nice Avengers base. Surely this came with Captain America. That says 2005. I think it's one of the later Captain Americas in the Toy Biz line. We'll come back to that and that. Here's another Daily Bugle piece. Oh, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Look at this. Oh, this has definitely got to go downstairs in my secret lounge. Uh, if you guys haven't seen some of my other videos, my best of the best action figures are displayed downstairs in my basement in a room that I call the secret lounge. And I'm going to be updating that video for this year to show you what changes have happened down there. So be on the lookout for that coming up real, really soon. And that's why you want to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of those things. But this is an Ultron display. And we finally got a classic comic accurate Ultron. And how great would it be to have that Ultron coming through this melted doorway, like stepping forward over the fallen Ultron robots. Oh man, that is awesome. Again, 2005. So what, 16, 17 years old. And again, and look, look at, look at how, oh, look, there was like bolts in there and he's like melted through the bars to get out. And each one of these Ultron robots is slightly different. They all have like a slightly different sculpt and look to them. Oh, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Here's a great one. So this is a very, very Todd McFarlane styled lizard who's trapped, you know, in this display. And it's articulated. It has an articulated jawline uh, when Todd McFarlane... Uh, oh, and the arm's articulated. Oh my gosh, look at that. So you could set this up and have, have the lizard like absolutely coming out at you to attack your Spider-Man. When Todd McFarlane uh, became famous uh, drawing The Amazing Spider-Man, he had a little bit of creative differences and really wanted more creative control. And so Marvel... Oh, the head is articulated too. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this thing. Anyway, they gave him his own title, and so it was the adjective-less Spider-Man title, and his opening storyline involved the lizard, and this sculpt is very much Todd McFarlane's lizard from that storyline. So, wow. So good. Here's a, like an Empire State Building base. Man, another kind of random base. Oh, this is nice. So this would be like a World War II base. You've got like a, a, a shot out window. You can see the different bullet marks going around. Here's like a, a German tank turret with the shells. Look, each individual shell is fully sculpted and individually painted. Oh my gosh. Here's like a, you know, a piece of crate that's fallen in the ground. 2002 is the time frame on this. It just goes to show you, I talk all the time about the love that Toy Biz put into these figures. Well, this is the love that they put into what came with the figures. I mean, this isn't even the daggum figures. This is just the stuff that they packed in the package, and it was given just as much care and detail and beauty as the action figures themselves. Here's, here's the, the Captain America that goes with that. Here is a, a, a slightly uh, different version of the Daredevil base that we've already seen. We saw more of a brown one previously. This one's black. I, I really like them both. It's kind of a regular base. Oh my gosh, look at this. So, 2001. This may have come with a Diamond Select figure because it's so large. I have a hard time believing that this thing was in a Marvel Legends package. The river piece comes off and you can see all the detail in the riverbed below it, including a human skull hidden down there. But then you put the riverbed on top and you can see which way the water's flowing because the bubbles are coming around this stump that's coming out of the water. Uh, there's even a snake like partially submerged going through. Here's some more bubbles to show you the flow of the water. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. These sculptors should have gotten credit for this. Here's the Stark sign that came with the original Iron Man in the very first wave of Marvel Legends. Oh, sweet. I've got two of these. <laughs> oh, that's great. We'll definitely, we will definitely take advantage of having two of those. 
here's another just kind of a generic base, although it does have a pretty cool, like, skull. Oh, here it is. It's like this. But that's almost like, I don't even know, it's like a cow skull? I'm not even sure what that is. There's the JJ that fell out of the window from, like, the very first piece that we picked up uh, in this box. Another one of those, another one of those. Oh, look at how huge this is. I, I think this I think this came with... I think this came with the Ultimate Spider-Man that was the first figure in the Marvel Select line. And I bet you this is the bottom for it. It does say 2002, but these things should probably fit together somehow, maybe. We'll check it later. But yeah, so here's a good old webbed up bad guy that Spider-Man got after. But, you know, just a great, you know, multifaceted weathered brick wall. Oh, here we go. So here is the leg, and here is the arm. And so these go like so on our Vault Guardsman figure. So, you know, we looked at this in three dimensions. Now add the arm and the leg and see how much more detail is involved in this base. Unbelievable. Got kind of a nice Mysterio-y sort of base. Actually, that is pretty cool. We could use that with some Mysterio figures. Here's like a really old, what does that say? 1995? Or either 95 or 96 from a Human Torch figure from Toy Biz. Here's part of a Storm base, another Stark, a couple of, here's, here is the Captain America base. And, you know, he came with the American flag. And to Hasbro's credit, because trust me, as much as I love these, these Toy Biz figures, Hasbro is continuing to crush it to absolutely crush it with their Marvel Legends line. And never is that more apparent with what they're doing with the 20th anniversary figures, where we're getting, you know, we've already seen Iron Man, Captain America, and the Hulk, and they're coming with bases that are reminiscent of the original Toy Biz toys. Another another cool base. That's a it's kind of a neat sort of fence piece that we can use. All right, here's the head of the Sentinel. So we did... If I can grab it, here is like the leg of the Sentinel. Here's the head of the Sentinel. And here is the chest of the Sentinel. So these were three different X-Men figures. This one says 2001. That one says 2004. And this one says 2004. So, so they made this in 2001, this incredibly detailed destroyed sentinel head and somebody maybe it was jesse falcon who was kind of running the line for toy biz said hey why don't we do some more of this and gives us this this terrific combination constellation of sentinel pieces they don't necessarily you know fit together but you could certainly create a display using the three of these that would be that would be just absolutely phenomenal another kind of Spider-Man scene. We've got a fire hydrant popping out, Broadway sign, uh, all you know, mailbox crushed in there. Um, just another good, cool brick wall, Iceman. Oh, this is pretty cool. So I think this was like I think it was like a web and trap Spider-Man. This had you know parts that went to it, but if you pushed it in, ah, there's a spider that comes out. Oh, that's so crazy. And then here is another just mammoth, mammoth base. Of course it is. Because it's Giant Man. And this one doesn't seem to have a, a date on it. But this is Giant Man from, again, Ultimates. We saw that launch gantry for Iron Man earlier. Here is Giant Man in all of his glory. This is really... There's a moment in Ultimates... It may have been in Ultimates 2... Where Captain America finds out that Hank Pym had like physically abused the Wasp... And that very, very much assaulted Captain America's 1940s sensibilities. And so he hunted him down, went and found him in a bar, and fought him. And knocked him out. I mean, completely cold decked him. And so it would be pretty sweet, actually, to display the ultimate Captain America with, like, his foot, like, standing on the chest of the fallen Giant Man. But look at, look at where Giant Man, like, destroyed the street where he came down. Oh, that's so, so great. Another Captain America scene. A little bit of a brick wall. Some Fantastic Four stuff. 
I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this mystery box because there is so much fun stuff that came packed with these toys. If you like my mystery boxes, don't be afraid to check out this playlist right here where we go through some of the greatest ones. And as always, hit like, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell so that you can stay up to date with all the cool stuff coming from Carbon Scoring.